I'm a thinker, observer, the baddest man you've ever heard of. All right, everyone, welcome back to the 2020 Vision Podcast. I'm excited as we've been on this journey throughout this whole season, talking about the 20s decade and an illustrious amount of topics and illustrious amount of episodes with many, many guests. And I'm excited that we are nearing the end of season two because we have so much in store for season three. And so the title of today's episode is called Waiting to Prosper. And so for many of you who are in your 20s, the goal is, you know, to wait, wait, wait. People wait to make decisions. People wait to, you know, invest in themselves and to have important life-changing moments and so we're going to be just breaking down and talking about what that means you know what part of your 20s and your college moments should you be waiting and also just what it means to fully prosper once you uh, realize your full experiences and dreams so today with me i have an amazing young woman by the name of miss Kaziah lucas how are you i'm good how are you i'm doing great thank you so much for hopping on so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll get right into the topic of course. Okay. So my name is Kazaya Lucas Innocent, um, but many people know me by Kaz. I am 21 years old. I'm originally born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. I currently attend the Lincoln University of Pennsylvania, the first degree granting HBCU. Thank you. And I'm a rising senior studying political science and Pan-African studies on a pre-law track with aspirations to one day go on to law school and officially start my own nonprofit organization. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, and we can get into like more stuff later, but yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, talking to you for a little bit of time just in the last couple of weeks, you know, it's shown that people who really are ambitious, who are driven about their, you know, young, successful careers and colleges and also just going into who they want to be in their 20s. It's really inspiring, like I said earlier, to figure out what you want to do, you know, figure out what's the path you want to go on, who do you want to impact. And I think for many of us who are in our 20s, you know, waiting, you know, the term waiting is something that a lot of people take for granted. And I think it's because people like to jump into things, you know, they might not be patient for what uh, God has, you know, coming for them or even a reward or some type of blessing that, you know, he's about to put on their life. So when you think about waiting to prosper, you know, what does that exactly mean to you? Because I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't like to wait just for anything. I mean, you, you know, for fast food, for, you know, going to vacation, going like a lot of people don't have patience for many things. So for you, what does that mean, you know, waiting to prosper and how does it correlate to where you are in life right now? Um, I think it is such a great depiction of what is going on in my life right now, especially like I'm almost nearing 22. So like, you know, just in my early 20s, it's a lot going on, but um, this is coming from somebody who does not have any patience at all. Like, I am probably one of the most impatient people that I know. Like, I've learned patience, like, throughout, like, spirituality and, like, learning myself and growing and, like, especially in, like, a professional sense, like, definitely learning patience. But um, waiting to prosper, like, oh. I don't know like that just means to me like really when it's my time it's my time and i feel like i've learned that so much especially being in college um like i said before i took the first three years of like school to like really figure myself out like what do i want like who am i like what am i doing here like there's so many times i thought and i'm like am i even meant to be in college like like what is what's here for me so um especially with like projects also like wanting to like do things creatively but not having that that confidence and that drive to like just go head force for all of the things that I want so um definitely for me it means that I'm taking my time um and I feel like sometimes when you're like a naturally anxious person like myself um you just want to 
rush through things a lot unintentionally like it's really not, like it's really not my fault but like i just be rushing and i just be trying to get things done because i have so many other things that i want to start and um get out there to the world for people to see but um really just you know once again when it's my time it's my time and knowing that whatever's for me would never leave me pass me by like it will always be here for me so like whatever i meant to have i will have it in alignment with my life with what god wants from me like just anything relationships creative directions um modeling gigs um school even like my ideas and my aspirations to go to law school like if it's in alignment for me to go right after undergrad like that is what i will do so i definitely alignment when it's my time it's my time and knowing that nothing that is for me will ever pass me by so that's what it means for yeah, and I love, you know, that you said that because I think a lot of people our age or even just in college, um, you know, not everybody has the same type of religion. Not everybody has the same type of belief. So I think the way people manifest things and dream about, you know, what they want and what they're going to get and also what they're willing to work for, I think is also important because when you're young, you know, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that you want to do. There's a lot of stuff that you see. Uh. Um even in your youngest years in middle school, high school, like that's where you have no control over it because you're still a minor. But when you are in college, you know, you kind of like get that pre pre adult freedom that, you know, you think about, you're like, wow, I really have the power to do absolutely anything in this world. And, you know, coming from spaces that we come from where, you know, colleges, uh, you know, have kind of like built this system for us to where they're like, this is a set path that you're going to go on or this is you know you have to choose what you're going to do right here in college i you know i just don't think that's fair to people who like i said will are will and are willing to play the you know the long waiting game because sometimes you have to wait sometimes it's just it's timing and i talk about this all the time with uh close friends and even family is that god's timing is just impeccable nowadays like i i even yeah. experienced it in my life there are times where god will literally pull me back and say like this is not for you at this current time. And I have to, you know, sit back and listen to him because yep. I'm fighting the urge to just go ahead and say like, you know what, God, I got this. Like, you know, I see the vision. I see the final outcome. I see what I want to do. And that's where I sit there and say like, I'm not going to listen to him. But then he gives me another sign where it's like, you have to wait because what, you know, what's there in the future is like a bigger blessing than what you're missing right now. And I think for many yeah. college students and many of us in our 20s, they sit there and say, you know, I want, I rather what, you know, I rather get what's right here rather than wait and get the bigger blessing later in the future. Because a lot of them say, you know, it can be something as simple as a car, you know. So for many people in college, you know, some people come to college with cars, some people don't um, due to, you know, circumstances. And so, for you, let's say you have a person who wants a really nice car, and let's say you have a person who you know wants the basic. I, not not for my not to hate on my people who drive Hondas, but let's say somebody wants a basic Honda Civic, and let's say somebody wants a you know an Audi, and you have to sit there and say like, are you willing to wait you know for that really nice Audi, or are you willing to you know get the Honda Civic so that you can just um, go where you need to go? And so for those who you know are have that mindset and say like i'm willing to wait they're gonna realize that a honda civic is just a honda civic no matter what symbol you put on it but the right. fact that you have a car and the fact that you can go from point a to point b and the fact that you can do what you need to do and you know you are blessed enough to have the wheels to do that that's the mindset that i you know people need to start realizing is important right. the waiting game is you know that's a absolute powerhouse that people can use in the future and i think a lot of people should definitely uh, manifest it, you know, instead of, and I get, you know, like you, you pointed out the whole point of anxiety and the point, you know, the point of like being scared of what's to come in the future. I go through that personally. I know a lot of people watching and a lot of people in college go through that too. But, you know, for you, how does that anxiety play out? Do you feel like that, you know, the anxiety takes over? Do you feel like the anxiety is controlling your mindset or telling you to make, you know, certain decisions? Or do you feel like you're able to control the anxiety a little bit? Um, well, first, I just want to say I completely resonate with everything that you're saying, especially in terms of like God's will is what it is. And his timing is extremely impeccable. So that hands down is amazing. Like, yes, I 
I feel that. Um, for me personally with my anxiety, I feel like in the beginning when I was self-conscious, very insecure, um, very ignorant to my own self and ignorant to the world, I feel like my anxiety definitely was able to take over me a lot more just because I feel like when you are spiritually like not having your guard up like when you aren't spiritually aware when you aren't strong within yourself and when i say spiritual awareness that doesn't mean like spirituality just that um it also incorporates religion it incorporates knowing of self so when you really know yourself you're less susceptible to be taken over or controlled by any other force outside of yourself and whatever and i feel like me personally like when you are a child of god like you really have a direct connection and a direct line to God and to his graces and things like that so when I say anxiety uh, things that are outside of myself God is within me so anything that is inside of me that um, doesn't induce anxiety doesn't induce stress or anything like that I feel like is a direct connection to God and um, when I'm operating in that space of like pure confidence and at my highest I feel like that's when like anxiety doesn't have a place like I'm able to call it out and be like okay that is this and I can separate and differentiate what my feelings are so I feel like yeah in the beginning when you don't know yourself you're you're able to be taken over by anything and it's easier for you to be depressed it's easier for you to be swindled by what goes on in the news like it's just easier for things to attack you when you aren't in a space of like fully knowing yourself yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I love what you said about, um, you know, no, because a lot of people, I feel like personally and mentally, they don't know themselves as well as they should because they're not willing to do that work on the inside. I think a lot of it is like a personal mind thing. Like yeah. you sit back and say, you know, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do for my life. But a lot of people are so, I talk about this all the time. People are so like, their vision is, you know, so like narrowed. It's not, you know, they're not like thinking about the 360 full cycle that, you know, they have the good capability of thinking about because right. as a human, you know, you, you express different things, you go through different emotions, you have different areas of, you know, feeling, you get angry, you get sad, you get happy, you get anxious. Like it's okay to do that as a human, but you also have to understand that a lot of that stuff is controlled. I was watching a, um, a sermon today uh this morning for you know as in supplement to church and one of the things that the pastor said that is and I, I talked about it on one of the the things i posted to instagram was that um there's three there's three people that we all should um, have a great understanding of is me myself and i those are three <laughs> people that i feel like a lot of people within themselves don't have an understanding of because they're constantly focused on the eye and that's just like constantly what's going through their mind is like i i i but you got to focus on the me and the myself if you're not focused on the me and myself then you're allowing yourself to get you know blindsided to where you feel like you don't have the you know emotional intelligence and the the smartness to be you know to say like these are the two areas i need to focus on and so with that sermon he was saying basically that you can't allow those three to block you from you know the the growth that you need and so part of that is saying you know controlling your composure and that's not saying you can't get angry you can't get happy you can't get mad you know making sure that your composure is your biggest superpower because that's how you respond to situations you know a lot of us in our 20s a lot of us in college I feel like we don't keep our composure due to you know that generational feeling of you know i'm gonna blow up at this or i'm gonna get mad at this or i'm gonna you know be upset because this person said this or this person did that but if you are allowing yourself to protect your peace and protect your energy you're not wasting it on that you know situation or that drama or that unnecessary mess you're then taking that energy and reverting it back to what you need is growth and i so i resonate with that a lot um and going into you know just personally into who people are so one of the biggest psychological things that I've been doing research about is, um, you know, the the five components of, you know, just like our mental our mental state. So I was uh -huh. doing some research, and so you have who, what, when, where, why, and uh -huh. how. Everybody knows, you know, what those are. So if you look at yourself and say who, what, when, where, how, why, you're looking at the different spaces of your life and saying, you know, 
who are the people that are you know affecting me to feel this way what is the problem you know when am i gonna start to realize that half of it is myself and you know the things that i allow myself to get um, bothered by and then how am i gonna be able to fix this and why is it even bothering me in the first place and you have to be able to ask yourself these questions because that's going to be the ultimate test to see like you know as personal growth that's going to allow you to see like can you handle these you know the, the true emotional intelligence like of yourself because if you can't handle yourself how are you going to handle other people and the you know the bigger situations that come later on in life so going into that for you personally how how do you feel like you best you know handle your composure you know because you um, are very successful you know you have a lot of things going for you and as you know a young woman who's ambitious and driven there can be a lot of noise there can be a lot of you know clapbacks there can be people who you know may not see the light in your life the way you do so how do you feel like you handle your composure how do you feel like sometimes you take those you know unnecessary um drama that may come even if it doesn't you know it's going to come in the future how how do you handle that best um well actually just <laughs> this is so funny that we're having this conversation i just got done having a situation where like i felt like okay like hold your composure but i've realized where like like it's a very thin line between holding my composure and not expressing myself and keeping myself quiet so um i feel like i've definitely had to learn over the years like how to compose myself and how to not let anything outside of myself create inner turmoil or a conflict within myself and like really maintaining inner peace. It's still a, a work in progress. Um, I don't have all the answers. I have tools, I have tips and things like that, but I definitely don't have all the answers when it comes to maintaining my peace. Um, one thing I definitely will say, uh, the block button is my best friend. Um, <laughs> I love, I love, love, love to black people. Um, just because for me, out of sight, out of mind. So like when I can't see and or think of you, like it, it's out of my brain. Like I don't even, I don't even want to see it. Like, and especially for me, like I've learned like as I grew older that if I don't like someone or like if we have a disagreement or like you just really don't resonate with who I am as a person, why would I want to follow you? Like, I feel like that's intentionally hating. And like, right. why would I, why would I want to be seen as a hater? Like, I just, that doesn't even make any sense to me. Like, why would I be following somebody or like keeping up with somebody who I really don't like or really don't resonate with? Like, that's weird to me. Um, so yeah, just really uh, creating routines for myself. I think once you learn like, what is my routine? What works for me? How do I? Uh, best get myself to wake up in the morning like how do I stay in a good mood throughout the day um, really just paying attention to that and like heavily being aware of what I am taking in especially like energetically I think it's very important to be aware of the environments I'm in the people that I come across the conversations I have even so much as like our phones like we take in so much on a daily basis we consume so much energy so much information that it, it's hard to differentiate okay what is for me what is not why am I letting this get me upset and I'm not personally involved like just really figuring out like okay how are my emotions heavily connected to the things that I'm attaching myself to daily? So that's another thing that I really pay attention to heavily. And obviously praying. Um, I read the Bible like, okay, I'm not like one of those diehard Christians. Like I don't read my Bible every day, but I do incorporate God into my life as much as I can. So if it's not me reading a scripture every day or me saying a prayer or like getting on the prayer line, it's me like just being present with myself and just being like thank you god for you know just everything that you've been doing like you don't always have to ask for things you can definitely just say thank you um and that is enough so yeah yeah now you you hit it right on the money and i want to i want to go back to that word environment because lord have mercy if i cannot emphasize to the good people that are watching and the good people of just the world you can absolutely control your environment. I don't I don't know how many times I have to say this to people. Your environment does not have to be what it is. Like you have the power to change your environment. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mean I don't mean 
physically i mean mentally you might go you know to some meetings you might go to some rooms you might go to some experiences or programs where you don't mess with somebody but your mental part of that is gonna that's what's gonna allow you to either say like i'm either gonna let this bother me i'm gonna walk on top like egg and and seashells and just say you know what i'm living my life i ain't even worried about it and that's that's one of the dearest like lessons that i learned from my mother because my mom was straight up she will walk in the room and literally say like i will own this she was she will own everything in that room she don't care and that's one of the biggest like yeah. boosters that i gained in college is learning like no matter what room i walk into i have to understand that i deserve to be there obviously i wouldn't yes. you know, god wouldn't have put me in that room if i if i had the ability to walk in and I, for a lot of people that means mentally too is that you know the mental part of things you have to understand that god put you in these rooms mentally because he's allowing you to see that you have the you know endless possibility you have the opportunities you know yes. you can get whatever you want as long as you work hard be humble about it of course and make sure that you're impacting you know people along the way but environment wise it's so easy to change environment there like even at my school i go through so many experiences where i'm walking into spaces at my school and i you know you know like when you're growing up and you have like that one person that you don't want to see and you're like oh uh, you're like why is that person here you're like out of all people on the planet why yes. do you have to be here right now at this space of my life and then you're like why am i so bothered about it you like you're literally sitting there like why do i have to be bothered about this because you're like you know what the, you know they're not thinking about me obviously and I, that's one of one of my uh, very good friends. He just told me recently is nine times out of ten that person isn't thinking about you. They they not even have a single thought about you. You might be you know it's that self conscious that says like oh shoot this person's here today I got to deal with it. People do that all the time at corporate jobs at meetings you know dealing with different people and they're like oh I got to deal with this person I got to deal like don't worry about that person or don't worry about that group of people because nine times out of ten those people ain't even thinking about you and if you if you allow them to see that it is affecting you, that's what's going to make it worse. Like, I've yeah, already, that's what fuels it. Yeah, I've already admitted to people like I've dealt with bullying. I've dealt with, you know, people being toxic. I've dealt with all types of negativity. But the one thing that I've learned as a big component of that is that the more I allow them to see that it's bothering me, that's a weakness. That's an instant jump. It's like an instant kill for my people who play video games. It's like once they see that, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going straight for the uh, straight for the head and so it's like yes. once you change that about yourself change your mindset walk with your head high you know what I'm saying? fix your posture like do all the things you need to do to make sure that you're walking high and make sure that you're not allowing these people to bother you because that's gonna ultimately change your uh the way you think about things too in the future you're gonna go into every room confident you're gonna go into every room saying you belong here you're gonna go to every table saying i pulled up this chair for myself god obviously you know had my support had my back but you know i worked hard for this and don't allow people to belittle you honestly like i hate i i truly hate when people feel belittled in situations like even you know in my spaces in other spaces just in life i don't like people to feel belittled because that's basically saying that you're a waste of time and you're not worth it everybody's worth it you just mm. gotta show why you're worth it so that that's yeah. definitely um a powerful message and going into like the last topic you know let's let's jump into yeah i want to i want to push back from what we were just talking about and go into you know how people think so for you and your experience at your school and you know the way that you have handled situations and the way that you've dealt with different kinds of people um how have you been able to navigate those spaces you know mentally and spiritually because i know sometimes when you walk into a space or you come into a space like you know it might mess with your spiritual self it might mess with your you know your mentors and be like oh man i don't want to be here today you know i don't want to deal with this how have you been able to kind of control that narrative and you know maybe tell yourself like this is bigger than what you're thinking like you know get over that overthinking stage and and get over you know that that mindset of like i don't need to be here like this is not going to help me but you know get over those obstacles to see like kind of like the bigger vision and the future goal that could work out um this is like just so crazy to me because like this is in such alignment with what i was talking about with my coaches actually um and they were the ones who um not that they were the only ones but they were the most prevalent and most recent ones to have this conversation with me 
um i had wanted to like run for positions on campus like just queens of you know just anything around campus i wanted to get involved with pageants and stuff like that and unfortunately i wasn't able to do the one that i wanted so they could just tell that my motivation had like gone down like i just kind of felt like okay because i don't have that title i can't really do anything on campus like what is my purpose for being here you know what i mean so um i just really had to learn patience and understanding that a title doesn't make me anything and that is what got me into like you know balancing my mental and my spiritual part of like who i am because mentally i just felt very defeated and i was just like all right this is not a space for me like this is not somewhere where i want to like continue to try to grow my platform this is not a space where i want to involve people in my ideas or like my plans or anything like that like i just felt completely like all right, my campus doesn't love me. I don't love my campus. I'm not about to like keep putting in work and, and time and energy into this campus if people are not, you know, receive or giving me the validation or the recognition I felt like I deserved. So um, my coaches definitely put me in a position to really humble myself and really figure out like, I don't need to be validated by anybody. I bring myself the validation. I bring myself the recognition. What I'm doing should be genuine for this campus. I shouldn't do it for a title. I shouldn't do it for an accolade or anything like that. Like I am creative. I am different for a reason. And that is why God brought me here eight hours away from home, like <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Like there is a reason why I'm here and there's a reason why I have um these ideas like these ideas didn't just come from myself these ideas came from my creator like he wants me to do these things he wants me to be more involved on campus so um mentally i really just had to check myself and check my ego because i feel like ego is a really big thing for a lot of people and it's it's a it's a hard battle like it's man versus man um but i've learned to use my ego in a way that benefits me and that fuels my dreams and my ambitions and things like that so um really just coming to a balanced place mentally and especially because i experienced a lot of like mental health issues so that also was another reason why i was kind of like questioning things and like questioning my position in life and especially my position here on campus um spiritually once again, just daily devotion, spending more time with God, spending more time with people who bring me closer to God. And that has been like, now over the summer, I feel like that is one thing I can say I've like been more serious about is if you don't bring me closer to God in any aspect, way, shape or form, I don't want any parts of it. I don't want the opportunity. You can return it back to sender. I don't want the relationship. You can have it. I don't want the money. Like I, I promise you, like I could be broke and be full and be rich in God's love and his mercy and things like that. So, um, really just heavily paying attention to what brings me closer to God. And that definitely is do, being of service for my community and my campus and like trying to bring more campus unity so like that's what it's been for me so hopefully that answers your question yeah no i, I love it and that's that's so powerful to think about um because you know timing for yourself and timing for what you want you know out of life that's that's critically important because if you don't set that yourself, then you're going to find yourself stuck in so many different spaces. Um, and I've seen people do that all over. They get stuck on kind of like, you know, oh, I don't know if this is the right timing. I don't know, like, you know, if, if I should wait. But nine times out of ten, you know, you hear that famous statement where people say, you know, if not, if not now, then, you know, never. Like you have to really sometimes just take that big leap of faith and sometimes, yeah. you know, Sometimes take that leap of favor. Sometimes just wait till the right time. I know for me, there were a lot of things that, you know, I knew that I I just wasn't ready for. And I, I knew I wish yes. I would have learned that early on. And I wish I would have made more careful decisions in, in my uh, young career. But yes. that's what you live for. So, you know, making sure that you all have time to you know, invest in yourself, but also just give yourself grace and give yourself some patience and to know that you don't have to do everything right now. That's why I said most no. of the, that you make most of the things that you do in this decade, they all are, you know, pivotal to the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. It's all going to matter. 
You just don't have to make that decision right now. And if you are confident about something that you want to do or something that you want to start or something you want to manifest about, then just do it. You know, take that leap of faith. And if it doesn't work out, you know, try a different angle. Because I think a lot of people have truly seen since the COVID era you know, that stuff is all about trials and tribulations. Like you're going to have those bad days. You're going to have those bad moments. You're going to have those, you know, bad exams, bad grades, like, you know, bad jobs where you don't want to be there anymore. But you just got to see it through and really just understand yes. that it's all is all for a bigger purpose. So I say yes, all that. I love it. Yeah, I say all that to say for my people that you know are watching, just everyone in general in your 20s and just in college, take your time. Don't feel like you have to rush to do things. Don't please don't compare yourself to other people because that's just so unhealthy and so toxic to yes. the human nature. Um, feeling like you know you have to do stuff just because someone else is doing it, or feeling like you know you have to compare yourself to other people because they're in a different space in their life. That's not how we should live our lives at all. And I think for anybody that does, definitely needs to change that mindset as soon as possible. Because the minute you start doing that, is the minute you start to create these, you know, this false narrative in your head that you have to be where someone else is. Well, obviously, we're not, you know, we weren't created the same exactly for that reason. You know, so you don't have to have this job because someone else have. You don't have to, you know, have this career because someone else has it at this time. You don't have to take that, you know, jump and go for this opportunity because someone else did it. Like, go on your timing. Trust God's timing, obviously, and also trust the process because at the end of the day, that's going to be your backbone, you know, when it's all said and done. So, yes, um, that is I, I really want I really want to say that I resonate with that. And I also wanted to add on that. It is so cool. You guys like so cool to be yourself, like to be authentically you. That is cool. That is the best type of person that you could possibly be. Yes. That's a super see i feel like you know if if you're not yourself then it's just it doesn't feel real it doesn't feel genuine and i it think doesn't feel right for a lot of people you know they just living through other people is just it's not healthy and i do it all the time i mean i or i'm sorry i used to do it i stopped doing that i stopped living through other people you know i live in my own lens i try to figure out uh, what i want to do you know try to figure out what's best for me and that has ultimately been the best part of my journey is knowing like I'm doing this for me, you know, doing this for my career, doing this for my growth and being myself has actually been the best gift that I could have ever, you know, been given. Like, I think a lot of people struggle to find themselves at time and that's okay. You know, it takes time to find yourself. It takes time to really, you know, settle down and figure out like what you really want, but being yeah. authentic, being authentic and being yourself, that's important because if you're somebody else, then, you know, what's the point of you saying, like, I'm doing this for me, then you're just doing it for other people. So it really is not, you know, part of the human nature. It's not why God, God put us on this earth, you know, to be other people, obviously. Um, and it's OK. You know, change is OK. Growth is OK. Like, it's OK to be at a different space in your life, be a different version of yourself, you know, in a different right. in your life. But always being yourself is going to be your biggest superpower. So definitely that's that's a huge one to, to take out too yes thank you so much like i'm just so glad that you you got to um just elaborate on that point because you you really took everything right out of my mouth like <laughs> thank you so much like that was that was dope that was really dope yeah so for everybody watching you know i just want you to all take away a couple of things number one is like we said be be yourself constantly because you know, if you're not being yourself, then you are allowing yourself to kind of fall in the, the trap of, you know, in the path of others. And that's not, you know, a healthy way to live your life. Number two is trust God's mm -hmm. timing. Trust your timing, you know, trust timing in general, because what you are, you know, not expecting at that moment could be something that you need in the future, you know, say five weeks, five to, you know, five days, five months, years, you know, however long, you know, it's going to take that it's going to be better with work, you know, with the way. And then if you do have something confidently that you're doing and you feel like this is the right time, make sure all your pieces are connected and trust God's right. you know, trust the process and get it done. Um, and the number three, I probably would say is just, you know, invest in the growth of yourself. Like, do not you know feel like you do not feel like, like do not settle down so quickly. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's always time for you to grow. There's always time for you to just sit there 
and say like this is a part of me that i want to you know establish this is a part of me that i want to you know fix or something a part of you that you want to grow go ahead and grow you know it, it's easy it might not be fast but it's easy you know definitely you can take lessons and experiences and memories from people that you know excuse me have done it 50 times you know ahead of you but if you don't go ahead and take that you know long shot and say i'm gonna make this change in my life i'm gonna make this growth you know make this a reality then in the future you're gonna regret it and regret is one of the biggest things that you know you don't want to live with so yeah but yeah definitely resonate you know with all of that and all of you you know take that as a lesson to you know to your life to your career to who you are as people to your friends to your relationship to your heart to your love all of it correlates as one big full full circle cycle so um yes. thank you so much i really appreciate it kaz you know if you have anything else you know you want to say i will leave it up to you yes thank you so much for having me um one thing i would just say or like just leave with everyone um be intentional um with yourself and with others and anything that you try to get involved with um take time to get to know yourself show yourself grace um there's so many times i feel like we're super hard on ourselves where we just need to nurture and love on who we are um and the last thing i wanted to say was to just take time like just take your time take your time take your time take your time i can't say or stress that enough um being yourself is cool once again um nurture yourself and like you said invest in yourself you are your first body your first home that you come to every night every morning every day so invest in yourself as much as you can invest in the people around you invest in your relationships invest in your businesses anything that you are the creator of invest in it to your fullest and always hit me up i'm free to talk i love conversations i love collaborating with people um no matter the distance or where you are um i just love all my people i love everyone so yeah. Well, thank you so much, guys. This has been an honor. I'm just excited that this has given me the platform to really allow people to, you know, be themselves and really just take their time and, you know, figure out who they, you know, want to be and who they want to strive to be. Um, and also just take all the lessons and experiences and all the memories and things that people share their stories and hopefully it inspires you know, others to apply those to their lives as well. So I really appreciate it. Um, you guys stay tuned. I have two more episodes after this for season two. And then season three will be, season three is going to be a movie. That's all I'm going to say. Um, yes, I'm excited. And I really appreciate uh, everyone for tuning in thus far. And this is going to be an exciting year, not only for all of us as college students and 20 year olds, but just as a society, I'm excited for what's in store. I feel like we are getting back in the swing, you know, of being good people. And I want us to keep on that track, yes. helping each other progress and grow and loving one another, you know, as we are. So thank yes. you. Again. I thank really you appreciate for it. Of course. And I will see you all in the next episode. See y'all.